Hey, friends, friends of Komodo, Komodo platform and Komodo platform related price charts, projects, points of interest. Let us take a, a look over here at a chart that I want to share with you using Get Orox. If you want to try Get Orox, you can use the referral link in the description below. My name is E. Giuliano. And I want to share to you about Komodo platform through these price charts. And look, long story short, we're gonna, we're gonna be here for a while. KMD, Komodo is not going anywhere. If anything, they are coming out into the spotlight more and more over time and slowly. I mean, something like Pirate Chain R just blew through that uh, invisible glass ceiling or maybe it's uh, it's a pretty strong ceiling that's in place it's a psychological one for sure it's an information based one for sure and uh, who knows why and how markets work the, the way they do but i do think that psychology is definitely involved i mean that's, that goes without saying at this point and that's in terms of price chart action and then also a lot of fundamentals are involved in terms of the actual building and development and then adoption and usage of the underlying product service business model. Yeah. Well, now we're talking about KMD BTC chart. Um, a couple things I'm using get Orox, and with this, you know, there's a light mode up here. If you look at the top left, a light mode and a grid mode. I didn't know that the, the light mode offers see up here, you can add, um, you can add charts. So uh, if you go up to this, area here uh, you can you can add it for example i added the kmd usdt chart just so we see a difference like you saw that one going down and this one well now they're giving us a 30 minute chart and it's a bit different because i haven't really <laughs> altered this one at all the nice time frames here i like the the month action i haven't really delved into that we will look at a one month chart with komodo and then we're going to check out the weekly closing candle from komodo so we'll check it out in dollar terms first okay so it's down from previous weeks but a uh, green week let's call it and <clears throat> interesting this is a usdt pair so there's no data before that because in essence on binance the usdt pair did not exist uh, before that okay you could there are i think if you use trading view itself and maybe here but i'm not sure i, I don't think i saw it you can't because I think this links directly to the exchanges, uh, but it, it, TradingView does have some calculation of US dollar if you wanna find it further back. Now, this is a weekly chart here. This is the USDT. You can add others. You see, I've got the RBTC, the RUSDT, and then we've got the BTC USDT so that we can complete our triangles. Okay, our love triangles, love and hate triangles. All right, now, we made it to a peak high of, of about 475 in dollars down to a body closing of about 375. And then the next week we closed at around a little less than two, oh, sorry, a little less than three. That was the week of uh, 12th of April. Then week of 19th of April, with, which, which just finished actually. So this would be, if these dates are correct, this here would be the closing of the candle for the previous week of uh, April 19th, because yes, now we're on the week of April 26th, which so far is a green week. So I, I misspoke earlier. Now that last week we closed red and we closed at about above $2. According to this chart, it did dip to the ones, um, which shows here a nice support level. Let's draw a horizontal line here for support. We'll just keep it right here roughly. Okay, I'm experiencing a bit of lag. Let's see if that slows down. Now, okay, how's everyone doing? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I hope you're doing all right. I hope you are keeping rested in your own way, healthy, you know, exercising, eating, doing your things, you know, living a good life, or I mean a bad life, whatever you really want to do but just have your plan and stick to it, right? Isn't that the idea? Um, okay, now we're gonna move back to the other chart that I really wanted to show you. Oh, previously though, 
uh, I had mentioned about the big and the small, you know, and Socrates. And really what was being talked about there is that that which is big can also be small, depending on what you compare it to. So for example, this red candle here was big compared to this red candle, but it's small compared to these two red candles, right? So this red candle is both big and small. The big itself is never gonna be the small itself. Otherwise we would be taking a square and giving it the meaning of a circle, if you know what I mean. All right. Um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna keep our eye on here. So it looks like we're making an up move for now this week mm. in this direction here. And maybe, maybe this is basically where we'll stop at this kind of resistance area here. We've got like a closing here, wicks. Mm. We went down here, so there's price action here, here, and here. The wick is here already, so it's already an area of resistance. I'm not sure how much higher we'll go. If this is continuing to correct, then um, I'm guessing we're gonna hit down now. However, if we're following Bitcoin price, that could mean two things. Could mean either, uh, well, that probably just means one thing. It means if we're going down still, eventually after this up move, it means Bitcoin's going up. Maybe we're gonna hit that 56,000 level that people like to talk about right now. And then we might come back down, right? And then maybe go further up, who knows, or break down further on this. This is a USDT chart. So it's more likely gonna follow the Bitcoin in my opinion, which is not advice at any, step of the way. All right, now we're changing charts. Oh, see, that's what I was doing, right? Now, if I were to go to this chart on uh, over here, I'll show you. It's actually um, over here, all in this uh, this one, Coin CoinX RBTC. I'll just show you quickly. This is relating to get Oryx. I'm really enjoying this platform. I barely really even tried it yet, uh, barely, barely. Uh, so I wanted to show you that on this one. No, uh, you know what? I don't want to get too far away from this. I've already pulled us far away, too far away. Let's go back to our original, uh, our, our original chart here, which is actually the Bitrex chart, okay, of BTC, a KMD and BTC. And we're just trying to understand this pair. We're like, okay, what is going on here? If you noticed here, this is the monthly chart, and I've taken this, uh, this option here, and instead of having those similar candles. I want to just clean out some of that. Oops, don't want to add any indicators, thank you. I just want to clean out that noise and work with it like this, just kind of understand it like this. And in fact, that helped me to, because then you see the impulse moves, you see the more corrective moves. That's what made me think of this area here uh, as a corrective move, but then doing a little bit of reading and you know, it could be that this move from the low in April 7, 2017 to the high in December 2017, that could be some form of corrective move. Now, I just want to show you if we invert the scale here, there you go. Couldn't this be considered some form of corrective move? You corrected and then now you're up into an impulse and now you would consider this whole thing possibly the impulse but you know that you're in it once you get out of this especially once you break this high here which was at the i think 14,000 satoshi level but when you break it we're going in reverse so we're actually subtracting numbers because we've just inverted it right you see the numbers going down and now we're at the 4,000 level so when i when you you know but okay here's the other thing so that's one idea that we're working with here and in fact uh, let's re-invert it because we want to see it as it truly is. And imagine in school, hmm, in grade school, in elementary school, when we are children, oftentimes because we are shown a shape or a thing in a certain orientation, uh, it it becomes like that orientation is the thing. And if we see that thing in another orientation, we actually don't necessarily recognize it as that thing. Uh, and even slight deviations, for example, whoop, that's revealed a little too much. Okay, so let's say we want a triangle, right? When you have a triangle, just focus on the triangle, children. Okay, here, see this triangle? Imagine it's like an equilateral triangle. 
Maybe they even have that here in this tool. They do. Okay, good job. Uh, so let's see, how do you draw it? You take one point, you put it there and I guess, okay, yeah, perfect. Love you. All right, let's get rid of this sucker. So you got this equilateral triangle, right? Now, if we were to take that equilateral triangle um, and do something like this and say to kids, well, kids, is this a triangle? Uh, uh, depending on their understanding of triangles uh, and their recognition of triangles, they might not recognize it as a triangle. They might say, oh, may, may, maybe, I, I don't know. Oh, and then, well, if you did something like, you know, where you do even like this, they might not see that as a triangle. They might not see that as a triangle. Um, those of you with children, try it. And those of you with friends who have children, try it or ask them to try it. You just see what happens. I mean, depending on how old the child is, if they've already learned, but it's just the idea that now look, look at these complex shapes we're dealing with here. These are our charts that, I mean, I have to understand these, these shapes takes years of dedication and understanding. Now, what I wanted to come to was this line here, this bottom line. <clears throat> um, this bottom line here, this red horizontal line is actually the, the, the zero line in my opinion. I mean, I didn't go into it and perfectly draw it at the zero line, but we're not going negative. There's a zero six, I, I think we'll just hang out there. Can we get it to zero? Are we gonna waste your time? I hope you're watching it on 1.75 or I hope you're enjoying watching me do this. Okay, we'll just keep it wherever. You know, the idea remains. These trend lines, they don't have to be super perfect, but the more precision, the better, obviously. Obviously, uh, because then we can understand things better and make better decisions. Now. So this is the zero line, you can't go below this. So if it hits this, it's dead, it's done. So this is our asymptote right here. So technically, you know, uh, ignoring all of these numbers and everything, our trend could continue lower. If in a scenario, this is a Bitcoin chart, friends, this is a KMD PPC chart. So we don't know, we're not completely out of the woods yet. However, however, if we look just at these prices of the body closes. So this takes away also some of the intra month noise um, and gives us more clear indication on where the, the market was willing to settle uh, by the end of that month. So this top trend line here, I'll color it a different color. We'll color it the yellow one. That top yellow trend line, in fact, is when you use the candles. And in fact, I didn't even use this top one because it's the most out of reach, out of touch. Um, and since it didn't break this this one back here in June of 2017, uh, it I'll consider this to be the more valid one. And then we still touch this candle uh, wick over here for the January of 2018 candle. Uh, and then we touch these over here. You know, it's not a clean, super clean. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the yellow one. Uh, we touched this one here in the March of 2019. Uh, yes. And then we even pierce it here. So this is an interesting sign right here is a very interesting sign. Okay. Maybe it's signaling like, oh, are we ready to pierce out and move in this direction, uh, in the upwards direction, what we will call the, the upwards direction? Not sure. Not sure. However, because we got rejected uh, uh, below it. We're below it, but but this is, we're still in April, but look, I, I doubt we're gonna close this candle um, above this yellow line, but may possibly, but I think the, the weakness of this candle and the resistance we're facing, I don't see why we won't come back down a little bit, especially again, this is a BTC chart. Don't see why we can't come back down a bit. to this kind of level here, which again is that 3000 Satoshi level. So let's put a horizontal line there just for our uh, shits and giggles as they call it, uh, horizontal line. Where did we say roughly here, right? Yeah, we said roughly around the three level. We're gonna color that differently, color me bad. We're gonna color you orange, there you go. Okay, and then, what are we going to do? We are going to, 
keep an eye on it. These are month, month at a time candles, you know, but we're playing with, we're looking at the long game. We're just trying to understand because here's the other thing. Hey, this chart looks really sad and boring and uninteresting. And it's, you got to understand, this is a freaking glacier right here. These are monthly candles. So who's interested in this? Not many people, except potentially smart money. In fact, smart money may have been in here, but based on what was happening in the markets and all of that, I don't think the smartest of money was here. It was probably in other things because during the, the, the 2019 action, um, well, you know what? I got to rephrase that because you know what I must say? The smart trading money must love Komodo. Either that or it's got the, the, the hungriest, happiest hippo bots that exist. Because look at this volatility here in between this area. I, I, this is great for, for getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out. This is one month at a time. It's not like you're going every day even. <laughs> so interesting, but then again, it's hard to judge all of this action one month at a time during the time that it's happening. That's also the case, isn't it? So, however, you judge it on a lower time frame. You look at weekly and then also daily stuff, and you can get a better idea of the picture of what's developing, and you can tell maybe, yes, good time to get out. Good, and you're using your resistance and support levels, and you know. It, maybe the smart money is here the whole time, uh, you know, or at least part of the smart money. Anyway, there's a lot of smart money out there. Either way, this whole thing is a composite operator, as they say, and we are just starting to signal that we're ready to try coming back into this playground here at this. Oops. At this, please work. Yes, thank you at this level here. And who knows what it looks like. Maybe there's a nice bull market that gets us up to those previous highs. I mean, sorry, previous lows and act as resistance. And then come back here and play down here for some, you know, reaccumulation and uh, other action. And then boom, into the next bull market, which takes us into this major resistance. And the reason I like this chart and thinking about it this way is because it also gives me a picture of the macro. I mean, in my thoughts, there are a couple things that could happen here. Either it could slowly build its way back up. And really now we're talking about 2024, 2025, 2026. And we're thinking now the space is really maturing and there's more notoriety and recognition. So if any, you know, yeah, and it, but it takes years, right? It takes years for it really to be at those huge levels. And even then there are still our big, the big candles, right? Up and down. Now that's one option. The other option is, we just go straight up whenever the next like super duper alt season is. And then we go, let's, and then we go just straight down, straight down again, because it's so violent up, it's got to just come back down. It's like, where's it going to, unless it maybe sustains somewhere, maybe it comes down here. Okay. Either way, we're going to end up around this area at some point, it seems like. Okay. Question is, what kind of volatility, what kind of time frame, what kind of movements, where are we going in between? Like from here, we were coming down from here at the beginning, very beginning of this chart in, in it shows March, the month of March of 2017, uh, all the way, let's say to the month of, month of March in 2020. So three years later to go from here to here, it was coming here, but look where it went in between. And so to trace that out, we don't know. Uh, the other idea might be, that Bitcoin just, just wrecks everything. The whole world is, I don't know what's happening and everything just moves towards its asymptote and you keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And maybe you break this trend line, but over time you just, you never have enough power to, to really fully, but eventually either, yeah, again, either it dies or, or it comes back up. It just doesn't seem like it's the dying type of situation for for this type of altcoin, because I do believe that altcoins themselves and the whole cryptoverse and the whole space of the industry and 
just humanity moving into this new technology realm and paradigms. Paradigms have not even been shifted and broken yet within crypto and it's coming. Komodo is part of that. And you've seen it with, with Pirate Chain, they're already we're shifting some paradigms with the privacy by default. And now uh, we haven't even really come to, to Varus yet on enough of a high level uh, in terms of, uh, 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 what do you say, scale, mass of people aware of it, but there's definitely a lot of awareness building. So, and then Komodo itself, well, you know, it's the, uh, it's the big dragon, so to say. Um, and let's see, we are in a good place to be making accumulation. I, I, who cares if it's here at the 4,000 level, the 3,000 level, the 2,000 level? It's meaningless because even if we take a risk reward, okay, because either it's just going to hang out here forever, in which case we are the dumb money. Why are we hanging out here? We could just chill in Discord and paper trade this thing, you know, so to speak. Um, or and yeah, or we could take a nice look at a risk reward. Let's say you're in at the 3000 level. Okay, let's say you, you, you get greedy here because you already have some, you know, like trying to, you know, uh, you might want to get a little bit more of that MCL or something like that. Maybe you get into some collider. Uh, maybe you're waiting to get something else. I don't know. Maybe you just want more KMD, right? And you want to get it up here, 4,000, 3,000, whatever. Okay. Um, so 100% risk, right? So let's say you throw, I don't know, whatever you're willing to lose, right? Don't they say only bet with what you're willing to lose, right? Yeah. So be willing to lose it. Be willing to sleep at night knowing that you could have lost it. This is the 100% move right here, okay? It's even 101.5% move for those of you paying attention. And this is a thousand percent move up to the, yeah, up to this level, okay, up to this previous level. But who knows when will that be? Is that a couple of years? But hey, thousand percent. Who's asking for a thousand percent in a couple of years? Isn't that? I know it's crypto. We're so freaking greedy and spoiled. Holy crap! But hey, that's another story. So yeah, these are just some ideas. Okay, let's say we don't even get there. Let's say we're just looking at this this A move. Uh, the kind of plotting out here that itself is a nice 500% move. I mean, it's a five to one risk reward. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's got to be good. That's got to be good. But remember, it's a long term, right? This is long term. So set it, forget it, stay here for the ride, watch the show, watch the party with me. Um, what else? We're going to keep this box here because we're curious to see what type of resistance this plays, what kind of up and down happens in here. Traders, if you're a trader, Get yourself ready to be trading some Komodo soon. I can see high volumes coming. Uh, why not? Well, I mean, high volumes for everything, isn't it? Probably. I hope so. Don't we all? All right. Now, uh, the other thing is Komodo is great for using. The KM, KMD is great for using it. You, If you, wanna, if you want 5% rewards by holding it non-custodially, you can get that. You claim them every month. Uh, what else? You just need 10 minimum. Um, yeah, and it's great to, you could use it on Atomic Dex or any of the other uh, versions, branded DEXs like Doge Dex. It's it's fun. It's fun to do atomic swaps and just to feel like you're using it because you, you can you don't have to use KMD either. You could use Rick and Morty. That's I mean it's really fun uh, or anything else. WSB coin that's there, even the Soldier coin, <laughs> and it, oh, yeah, yeah, even beer and pizza if you can get some hands on that. All right. Now, what are we looking at? Let's uh, let's clear this up for a second. You can hide all those drawing tools down here on the left. We're still on the monthly chart. We are going to change from candles to lines, and we're going to re return to this big theme here. Okay, what are we looking at? We are looking at possibly this whole thing as a correction move. The way I've drawn it out is as an A, B, C move, or what some might call a flat. They'll call this a flat, okay? Um, and then, and correct me if I'm wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong. There's this nice zigzag in between on this B move. And then the rest is an impulse move. And I just don't know how to count the impulse move properly. I imagine I'm doing it decently. I haven't done any real work on it. And in fact, I'm still learning. And that's actually part of this too, is I'm trying to learn how to recharge, look at charts, think about markets. And I hope that you are 
learning something along the way. So how did I draw it here? Okay. Uh, let's get rid of the trend lines, get rid of some of that noise. This trend line though, I wanted to mention because this is our body candle close high. It is on December uh, of 2017, that month. And so December, January of 2017 is our candle close high, which is very much like the candle close high of June in 2017, which remember wicked even higher into the hundreds of Satoshi, hundreds of thousands Satoshi level. Uh, if we want to look on a weekly chart or you do the work yourself, look on a weekly chart, you can find you can find out how long it was there. And then we have after this. So let's talk. Let's just talk about the corrective move. Let's not even talk about this impulse move. I, I don't even want to talk about this impulse move. And who knows what's going to the rest is going to look like. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't even know if this is finished. I don't know where we are in this impulse yet. I haven't really checked, but I did really try and understand what in the F is this. And what in the F is this? Let's play with the brush, you know. See, this is a, a fun thing. If you like drawing, it's just, this is a fun thing to do. Oh, squiggly. Oh yeah, that's because you don't need the brush, silly. If you want straight lines, go for a trend line. Oh, it's nice and yellow. So what the F, oops. F. Is this, what the F? is this you know anyway maybe this whole thing is the flat wow sorry for the lag but now we're realizing something as we're lagging <laughs> maybe this whole thing so maybe this whole thing see that's why it's difficult to say but then even then this would be the full impulse wave from this c level wouldn't it I don't know, maybe not. Maybe this would be the start of it. This is where looking at structures and counting things can be uh, interesting. Uh, either way, there's no doubt that this went from low price to high price, okay, very, in a very short time. And then it corrected in this whole structure because it reached about the same point and then proceeded to dump down large, okay? and Looking at it from a mathematical standpoint with the Fibonacci retracement tool, we're gonna to show you two things and we're gonna look at the weekly candle. Oh no, I think we looked at the weekly. No, we looked at the monthly candle. That was the monthly candle. Let's look at the weekly candle close. Although when USD is down, so guarantee in Bitcoin, it is down. But uh, let's take a quick look in a moment. So Fib retrace from this, general point, whoops, almost had it to this general point. We pulled a nice 786, which is between 618 and 100. If you're a Glenn Neely fan, uh, between 618 and, and, and 100, we retraced, okay? Then the cool part is we went from, <clears throat> for, this, for this B wave, I'm still using the FIB tool, the fib retracement tool. Oops. So use the same tool. You just start from a different point. And the point you start at is the thing you're comparing the other one to. So I'm comparing this move, the A to B move. I'm comparing it uh, with the C move. So I, I want to know how much of this A to B move did the C move retrace? And it looks like it retraced about 100. In fact, if you really look technically, it did uh, more than 100. But only a little more than 100, but that still is significant. And it is, uh, if you're looking at some more detailed texts, you'll see that uh, this itself, the whole move here from to, uh, from uh, this zero ABC could be itself an entire correction. And uh, that might be based on this move right here um, from March, to April. So it's unclear. There's so little data as well. It's not really fair. It's probably in more interesting, I guess, at this point, people want to look at this uh, around here. So in a, in the future video, we'll take a look over here. We'll go to a lower time frame and we'll try and see what's building, uh, what's going on, maybe. Yeah. And I'll just, uh, I'll keep learning and keep sharing. 
and I hope this is something that's been informative for you. Um, once again, if we if we flip this chart, uh, we can see that you know, not bad. Um, I, I I'm interested in it. I'm definitely interested in. Okay, alrighty. So. Uh, yeah, we retrace that 100%. That gives us a specific kind of rule and you could look up those rules. Uh, I still don't know enough about them to make any definitive statements about them. I just think that this is a really cool chart and this must have happened for so many alts in that time. The ones that came before, uh, like Digibyte, even Ethereum and other things that had data before it had a life before this kind of March, April, February, January frenzy of alt season, alt birth, ICO mania. Mm. Yeah, they, they, they might tell a, a, a more complete story. Anyway, all right, I think I'm done for now. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something and we shall again be talking soon. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, au revoir. Sai Jen.